Welcome to the Never Been Promoted podcast, where we're all about helping you cut the tie to all that holds you back. The excuses, the fears, the people, that sense of entitlement. Cut the ties so you can unleash your inner entrepreneur. Your host, Thomas Helfrick, is on a mission to make more entrepreneurs in the world and make them better at entrepreneurship. Hey, welcome back to Never Been Promoted, uh, the podcast YouTube channel. So today we're going to be joined by uh, Mark Wonderland for this show. Uh, he, he is uh, he's in the film world, he, you know, Mosaic. I mean, I'm going to butcher his uh, his intro here shortly, but uh, it's uh, Mosaic Media Films out of Austin. They do some high end cinematic piece, and we're going to talk to him about his kind of his journey, but also about how you can use video to kind of really raise your brand awareness to a higher end level. And and it's very powerful. I've seen it done, so I think you know this conversation will be very very on point too, because video is everything today in, in the, uh, in kind of the social media world. You, you got to really be doing it to some level. Uh, if this is your first time here or first time listening, you know, or, or watching, thanks for stopping by. I hope that this is the first of many. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. You were, our mission's very clear. It's to help uh, millions of entrepreneurs get better at entrepreneurship, help them kind of cut the tide, all the crap and shit that holds them back in life and all the excuses and fears. And um, even people, sometimes you got to realize, but we want you to get out there and unleash that entrepreneur, really get out there and become uh, a better at it. I think the world needs more of them. And so I'm trying to do my part to kind of enable that. But enough of that. Uh, only call to action I ever have is, you know, give the the, the podcast a five star rating on Apple and Spotify if you like it. If you um, if you don't, you can get me on LinkedIn and tell me why and what we can do better. And otherwise, just give us a subscribe to YouTube.com at Never Been Promoted. Enough shameless plugs. Let's get Mark, Mark on here. Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on the show, Thomas. Of course. You know, I, today's the first day we were trying live. So anybody who's just kind of watching this, every one of the guests had no idea they're going live today. So that's why I was like, <laughs> hey, you know, um, you want to try live? <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a pleasant surprise. Video. I was not able to get it to work on my end, but at least we got it on your end. So that's all that matters. I, I you know, and it's that with no notice, I, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's good enough. Um First of all, hey, so you're the founder of a, uh, you know, of a mosaic media films. You're down in Austin. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming, for coming on. Uh, before we, before we kind of dive into what you're doing, uh, I always like to ask kind of a fun um, icebreaker to some degree. And, and I, given your age, you know, you're 21, 22. Okay, sorry. He's much older. He's not older than that. I wish. Days. I wish. He's a good looking <laughs> dude. Like if you, if you're listening to this, might be my best looking guest today. It is. Um, <laughs> Is uh, I, I want to know Star Wars or Star Trek and defend your position. Go ahead. Oh gosh, it's definitely got to be Star Wars, but it's classic Star Wars. You know that's where that's where it's at. You know, original Luke Skywalker story arc is just epic. Not that there's anything wrong with Star Trek. Star Trek's really good stuff, but I was more of a Star Wars fan growing up. I agree, um, and you don't have to defend your position now that you said that. You're fine. Um, it's an accepted answer. If you if you say Star Trek, I I, I have to get you into the weeds a little on that one, uh, and understand why. <laughs> Though I will say, listen, the, the modern Star Treks I think are more cinematically entertaining than the Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like Star Wars new movies they need to kind of get the old characters retired, hundred yeah. percent out, and and just just make a better story moving forward and, and i think I yeah think i totally agree i saw the recent accolade i saw the two ones i was not a huge fan of it but i do really like the mandalorian i think they did a great job with that um yes. so yeah and i don't know why because you think it's kind of a slow movie right where it's mm -hmm. but it's just done so well that you're like i like that one i, I really I, I agree the mandalorian was fantastic the other ones are just kind of the problem is this when we were kids Right. And this this will tie this into your video. When we were kids, that was the coolest thing possible on the planet, including, you know, it competed barely with the Nintendo. Like that was like almost like, hey, those yeah. came out. Yeah, but I still love Star Wars. Now there's so much cool stuff that is faded out to like, eh, my parents like that. And and I'm trying to struggle in like and I like to have it at Disney because it's our age group that's paying for it. But it's like, um, I don't know. Yeah. We're going to for it. So let's go. Let's, let's tie this to video because relevance in video may be impactful to something you like but maybe not your audience but who pays might be different than though the audience so so let's tie that kind of metaphor of what star wars is to the younger generation and who actually pays for it when you go to disney versus what you're doing video but talk about mosaic media films what it does what you focus on and maybe give us the backstory of how you got there 
Yeah, absolutely. So I own a production company in, uh, called Mosaic Media Films. We're based in Austin. We predominantly serve the Austin market. We do videos all over. Our core focus is really to create content that our clients can use and leverage for marketing to increase conversion, whether it's on the marketing side or whether it's used as a sales enablement tool. But really what we're trying to do, and I tell my staff every time we take on a new project, is we kind of say we have to fall in love with our customer's customer. And that's how you can create really compelling video is we're not really creating it for the client per se. We're trying to get in the mindset of the person that's going to be watching the video. What is the problems, challenges, issues that they have that brought them to stop scrolling on this ad or brought them to a landing page to watch video content and read about the product or service that they're interested in. How do they feel? How can we create a video that resonates with them that's going to increase conversion? So if we can do that, tell that story in a compelling way and increase conversion for the client, it's, it's a win-win. So we're helping the end consumer or the user, whether it's a business, a brand, you know, a consumer, or um, whatever the case may be, so we're helping them kind of change the story that they have in their mind. And then we're also helping our client because they want to be able to you know, help people with their service or product. So that's kind of our overall arching approach. Now, how did you get into film itself? Like, I mean, like it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it sounds like a nice romantic, uh, you know, career choice. Most people don't get into <laughs> So Tell me how you, how, how, how it found you or how you found it. Yeah, absolutely. So right out of college, when I was in my 20s, not now, but a long time ago, um, I uh, worked at a company and we were a small marketing team at essentially a sporting goods manufacturer. And when you're a small team, you kind of have to do just about everything. So I did print design, packaging that you'll still see in like Dick's Sporting Goods today, um, did SEO, pay-per-click, website, photography, video, all these different things. And out of everything, video is really where the trend was going. So I took kind of my background in advertising and marketing, and I combined that with a very kind of cinematic approach. And at that time, when I was getting into it, there wasn't a lot of business videos that looked good. Most of them were like made by broadcast television stations. And with broadcast, it's a totally different style of video where they're more into like panning and zooming and doing it quick in and out within a half hour because they have three stories to tell in a day. Um, so I combine kind of the creative side and then also kind of the marketing side uh, with video. And that's kind of trajectory me kind of the was the trajectory that I am on today. So I did that. Uh, for a couple of years, I trained aspiring filmmakers on how to create this type of video. And now, you know, I have an amazing creative team. Um, so I don't do any of the filming or the editing. And my team kind of does the execution based on that fundamental principle of really marketing, uh, really good foundational marketing and understanding the business, the brand and the and, and viewer and viewer. And then having that creative side and that cinematic feel to it. Yeah. And it's 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 super important. uh it's not for everybody because because there is an investment you need to make in something like this. And you also need to know, I think, your own company really well. Like you have to know the pro value proposition, your culture, your brand, because if you're going to if you do this investment and it shifts a lot significantly, you just you wasted some money. Um, mm -hmm. How important, though, to you is is the actual maybe founders in the storytelling itself in the teams? Like where do they is it is it more about the customers or founders? Or is it, like what's the mix in your opinion on, on when you use video like this? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of times customers will, will come to me and they'll say, hey, you know, we need a story about our business. People need to know what we do. And I kind of take a step back and I say, well, really, it's not a story about you. It's a story about your customer and really how you help guide them and change their own story that they have in their mind. Because what happens is whether someone wants something as simple as a consumer product good, or they're dealing with a business challenge and they need a service and a company to help them, they have a story in their mind that they, that trying to solve that problem. And the business, the client that we're actually working with needs to kind of help them have that transformational change and change that story for them for the positive. And that's really what we try to coach and guide them through. You know, oftentimes it does include an interview with the founder because it's really that human, human one-to-one -one where people really buy from people. So having them incorporate in the video can be really powerful because it shows the passion, the pride, you know, and really the approach that they take 
to help that person that's watching the video, how they're going to help guide them through that story that they have in their mind and make that transformational change. Yeah, dive in a little bit where like your industry's changed with all this AI and 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 mm -hmm. just instant gratification world that we live in. How, how's it impacted the cinematic side of video for, for for your business and customers? Yeah, I would say the biggest change has not necessarily been AI as much as it been the shift of consumption, particularly on social media. So people will listen to both short form. People will watch both short form and long form. It all depends on the level of interest people have, right? So you go on TikTok, they're short form videos. You go on YouTube, they're long form, you know, hour long podcasts, right? So it really depends on the, the, uh, the person that's consuming it as long as it's good. The biggest shift has been really on the influencer side and also uh, particularly in the CPG space where like you have um, really user generated content outperforming kind of the polished stuff that we do. And that's not all the time. I actually had a conversation earlier today with a client that does both, you know, is in the CPG space. So consumer product goods, and they create both, you know, user generated stuff that they're doing with their iPhone. And then they're also doing kind of flashier videos that they want to get updated. And they say it's kind of a 50, 50 split. But what we found is sometimes that the most disruptive thing with our industry is that user generated content on a social stream is going to outperform oftentimes more of the stylized video that we'll have. And the main reason for that is because people are scrolling on their Instagram or whatever, and they don't realize that what they're watching is an ad. And it isn't until they're already hooked into the video that they realize that it's an ad. And then by that time, they're already hooked. They want to engage a little bit more. They'll click on the video. And that's where the higher end video is more effective, which we found it more of an evergreen style video where you have it about that product or you have it about that service because they've entered the brand at that point. And they've, they've already know that, okay, now I'm interested in purchasing this. Is, is it, uh, I mean, that's all obviously, I think very intentional and strategic, um, what's kind of the level of effort on the, like, let me say it differently. Where does it fall apart for a customer and where does it go? Where does it get really good? So like the level of effort that it takes to create a video. Yeah. I mean, from the customer, like your client standpoint, like a lot of times I think they come in with a, a assumption of one level of effort and you're coming in going, Hey, but you need to do this. Like for, for their perspective, like giving them the information, like if you're doing this, just be expecting to put this level of effort in from your side. So we could be successful on our side. And that could be from the strategy that could be from this, or it could be from being open-mindedness. I I'm just trying to understand like where it falls apart. Uh, in, in, and so people can come in and be more successful so they don't make these mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. So let me use, let me go back to the social media you know, approach as an example from both a strategy and a content creation side. So the number one mistake most people make is they're not creating enough content with video. They're not testing enough and they don't have video content across the buyer's journey. Okay. So, um, for example, let's say your company is running social ads, right? So the first step from a strategic standpoint is you want to run a test on image and copy first to get minimum numbers as far as what messaging and what imagery is performing well. So you do that on a smaller budget and then you validate what works. Then what we would do is we would create, and then you have ads, you have video ads that you're also going to test based on what you found in the results of the image and text ads. That would then take them on the journey of clicking the ad, going to a landing page or product page. And that's where you'd have that kind of longer form product video. And then once they buy, then you have some type of video content on the back end, and then you have retargeting stuff. So, so there's all different ways that you can use and leverage video throughout the buyer's journey funnel. So you have the front end social ads, you have a video ad, then you have, you know, kind of a post purchase where you have a retargeting based on what action that they took. Now, the way we like to start is we kind of start with that middle video, which is kind of in the middle of the funnel, which is on your product or landing page. That's an evergreen video. It talks about the product or service. It uses sometimes narration, sometimes documentary style interviews, visuals and, an, and visuals and animation. The goal of which is that you're telling the person that's going to buy about 
who you are, what you do, what makes you uniquely different. Video, we can extract a lot of social content that they can test. So that works on the front end. And then we can also create post content, which is your after you purchase video or your retargeting content. Um, so there's a lot of different varieties. A lot of it depends on what are their goals, what are their problems, what are their objectives, and their budget to determine kind of what overall approach we'd want. But in general, that's a good strategy that could kind of work for most companies, whether you're selling products or services. Is there a spot where there's overproduction and it has a like a deteriorating value? I feel like I'm thinking it's like shorts versus um you know, the quantity versus quality. Is there, is there a spot where, Hey, it's better just, you know, pick up the phone and do it yourself kind of thing versus do less. And so talk to me about me, the quality quantity and, and where, you know, the, the higher end stuff is really best served. The higher end stuff is best served when they enter into your ecosystem with a landing page or your website and things like that. That's where the highest quality stuff is most ideal. So like we don't work, we mostly work with B2B companies, but let's just use a consumer product good because it's easy to understand. So like think about a consumer product that goes to market and all the work time effort to the R&D, the focus groups, the different materials, the sourcing, all of this incredible energy, time and expense. And then they post the product on their website or on Amazon and it's got a couple of photos that they took with their iPhone probably right. not going to do well as a high perceived value of the product. And that's where video that you create one time really well, that tells the story of that product in some form or fashion of why that person that's viewing the video needs that product is so huge and, and powerful from a quantity standpoint. If you're going to do any quantity and you're going to do low kind of lower tech, quick videos, do it on the social side of things, do it on your organic Instagram, Facebook, test ads, because that's more of a quantity thing. The quality is more when they get into your brand and they see a video that's consumer focused. What's the problem they have? Why is this product or service going to help that? And what their life is going to look like after they've either purchased the service or the product. Yeah. It, it, and that's not to say that you wouldn't have, let's say like on LinkedIn, uh, a featured video that would be the high end. The ones you might do in between times on post would be something you could do on a lower end. So it's not that you don't use them on social yeah. media to be clear. Like everybody, I think that's, that's not. Yeah. Not, and also on the lower end too, like anything that you do all the time is you can go a little bit lower tech. So like organic content where you're just talking to camera like this, and you're going to say, here's three tips to dot, dot, dot. That stuff can be a little bit lower tech as long as the content's good. Social ads, social posts, you know, how to use something that you're posting like every single day that can be lower tech. The, the ones that are best served to hire a company like us is the evergreen things that tell a story about the product, the story about the business, the story about the service. And a lot of it depends on budget and average order size. So it's a totally different dynamic. If you're selling a $30 consumer product compared to one project for a B2B is like 50,000 to a hundred thousand dollars, you know, it's a totally different uh, game. I was going to say about budget. So, you know, these are expensive budgets for, for a lot of solopreneurs really can't afford. So if you're under a million revenue, you're not looking at this typically, unless you're like funded and you're on some giant growth path. Uh, what advice do you give though, to that solopreneur who's maybe their, their company's well under a million dollars or they're a million or less, and they still need video. What, what do you recommend? Like, cause if, if they can't afford, you know, your, a production company, what do they do? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're sub 1 million, you know, you still you still should have a pretty good marketing budget to invest in at least what I call a business promo or a product promo, and those are pretty affordable. You know, they can be as little as 5, you know, to $10,000. And if you're making a million dollars in gross revenue, that should be a pretty good budget for you to allocate for video because it is evergreen. So I would focus my attention on something like that where you hire a company. Whereas if you're doing, um, then do your social ads, maybe yourself and you could do, I mean, the phones today are pretty incredible to create stuff. Um, so when you're working with that agency or that video company like us, you want to try to get some structure in how you're going to create the content because it's not only like creating the video, but it's also having the right structure and how to write a script, how to tell a story, 
how to use and leverage it. And you can get a lot of great ideas. You know, if you're bootstrapping, one recommendation I have is try to act like a consumer and start liking the ads in an, in, of your industry or, you know, sister industries and just see how the ads are created. See how the structure of it is. You know, there's a hook, there's a problem, there's a story, there's a solution, there's a call to action. And you'll kind of be able to kind of reverse engineer the way to create a script and how you can use and uh, leverage it on your own. Yeah, it, it's funny when, you know, the same thing applied to websites. If people are like, which, you know, we're an IT services firm, we're not as big as Accenture, what should we say? I'm like, why don't you just go copy parts of Accenture? Like, yeah. <laughs> like they call and then R&D, make it your right? Rip, like, like they don't rip off what they say, but yeah, right. Exactly. Like, go, go find the ads you seem to like and just go do your version of it. Yeah. You know, like your script's done. Uh, what's kind of like the biggest maybe uh, mistake that companies make uh, when they're making video? I mean, outside of not hiring a professional, but uh, yep. what do you see that really like, man, oh, we run into the, and, it, and it's like brand wrecking. Like, what, what do you, where, where do you, uh, what, what do you see happen a lot with that? I see what happens a lot is like people are not testing properly um, to validate the offer or validate the angle. So we usually recommend if you're running social ads is you have to really test different angles. And we recommend first doing images and text. And an angle can be, you know, is it a testimonial that resonates? Is it a before and after? Is it a offer? Is it a special? Is it um, talking about the features or talking about the benefits? Is it, you know, you know, to look at different angles as far as what's resonating with the audience and then basically first validating that and then putting marketing money into it. What I see a lot of companies do is they'll try to do it on their own or try to figure it on their own. And they just spend a lot of money on ads because ads can get really, really expensive. Like Facebook and Google don't really care about you. They just care about taking as much money as possible. So they're not really optimized to like necessarily get you conversion, right? Like Google is just going to be like, if someone's typing in this word, we're going to put, we're going to put, your name up there or someone else's name who's willing to pay that amount. So that's really on you to get that conversion rate optimization and look at the data as far as what's connecting with people. You know, how can we change things on our page? How could we modify the messaging so you can minimize your cost per click? Yeah. Um, Tell me a little bit about your own business journey a little bit. So what have you discovered along the way? What have you learned? What's some advice you'd be giving, you know, entrepreneurs? Maybe it's actually even just very specific entrepreneurs that, that will become future competitors of yours, like, mm-hmm. you know, without misguiding them, of course. Um, no, what would you recommend to some of them? If you're like, listen, if you're in the video agency world, here's some mistakes or here's some things I've learned from building my agency. Yeah. I mean, some of the things with my agency that I felt to be the most effective is like I incrementally stepped myself out. I was never like a venture capitalist type of person to go get money and things like that. Um, The things that I've learned is like, you have to first look at what is your biggest bottleneck and then find someone to replace you for that. So with me, my biggest bottleneck was editing, right? So if I'm editing all day, I'm pretty handcuffed, right? I can't do too much and I need to be focused. So my first hire was really an editor. And then after that, my second biggest bottleneck was being on shoots. So really hiring someone on the filming side that could do that. And that helped me answer phone calls, have deeper marketing conversations and sell a project rather than being on set for eight to 10 hours for one day. Um, So that's really helped me is like understanding what your bottlenecks are and then hire for that once you can get uh, a good run rate with your revenue and you can surpass that kind of like, if all fails, I have the run rate to be able to succeed. Um, so that was really, you know, a huge, a huge win for me. Um, Mm -hmm. the other thing too, is just generally entrepreneurship overall is like 10 times more difficult than most people are willing to do. Um, and you have to learn a lot of things that you don't like. So my own experience is, you know, I'm more creative, I'm more marketing minded, I don't like the finance side. It's not fun for me. The bookkeeping, the accounting, you know, that stuff is not particularly fun, but you have to know a certain amount or a certain level of that stuff to have a successful business. You have to know how much money is coming in, how much is coming out, what does your AR look like? Um, so you can forecast how much you can spend on marketing, how much 
contractors or vendors or uh, employees need to get paid. Um, so there's so many areas of business um, that are important that you don't really you don't really expect when you're going from a solopreneur to actually hiring people. I talked to a friend yesterday and he said his biggest problem is people, you know, like not having enough people to fulfill the work that he's got bids or jobs for. So everyone's got a little bit of challenges and like, just understand being an entrepreneur, you have to have a lot of patience. You have to be super resilient and you're going to have to learn some areas that you may be unfamiliar with, but are there, but that are vitally important in, in a thriving business. No, I, I, you, you said some great stuff there and, uh, you slowly exiting yourself out of certain functions that you could do or don't like to do. Um, it's identifying it, but also not maybe doing it all at once. Like I really, this is the mm-hmm. part I really don't like to do now. Yeah. For you, uh, sales, is it still something you're, you, you enjoy in front and center on, or is that the next, is that the next task? Yeah, that's the next thing that I would get out of, but you really have to get it to a certain revenue rate before you can, particularly in a creative environment. You know, what we're, what I really do is my core focus today is marketing and sales. Um, I don't do any project management. I'm not doing any filming. I'm not doing any editing. I'll kind of touch base with my team and how things are going. I'll kind of stop off at a shoot if my schedule allows, but predominantly day to day, I'm focusing on the marketing side and I'm focusing on the sales side. And they'll always tell you, no matter who you work with is if you're a founder, you're probably going to be the best salesperson because you care the most and you know the most. So like for me to hire a salesperson, you really have to know the creative side of video. How are we going to craft a story in a compelling way and pitch that to a client? You have to know the marketing side. Like how are you going to leverage this in a way to be successful, to reach your goals? And then you also have to understand really the technical side. Okay, we're going to need to shoot in 4K. We can punch in with a crop, you know, to be able to get that because the room is so big or dot, 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 you know, all the kind of geeky stuff that you really need to understand in order to, know if you can fulfill what, um, and really that's the last thing for me, as far as like that I would have to do personally, um, is that salesperson. Yeah, you're right. So, so it depends on the business you're on for sure. Uh, when it's Mm -hmm. knowledge-based skill-based, uh, almost art-based and you're the, you're gonna, Mm -hmm. it's gonna be hard when the, if you have a value, if you're very structured value thing, you probably can do it. If they're buying into your vision and how you explain it, it's harder sure otherwise it's all process right like this is this is the value this is the process how we do it then somebody else can come in behind you um i personally too i I find you know that coming out of sales is tough because when we work with people they're really working with they want to work with me my team executes and so sometimes you got to just accept that that you're going to be in the thick of it until you until you aren't (laughs) yeah and i i know some agencies that are like multi-million dollar agencies and i've asked the founder and they're like marketing companies and he's just like, I still do selling to this day. He's like, you're, you, you, he says, that's the last thing that you'll get out of. And it's because like what we do is very, very bespoke. It's a totally different dynamic if you're a business owner and you have something that's very much like, here's our packages, here's what we offer, here's what we do. You're going to need some level of salesmanship. But if they have like a very structured like package, this is what we sell, this is what we offer. It's a totally different salesperson than someone who can, who's more of like what we do which is very creative in nature. It's very bespoke. It's very custom to what we're doing. There's not like a, it's this price for this thing and this thing and so on. Cause what we're doing is we're, we're really trying to solve a problem, a business problem for a customer. We're not really creating the videos per se. The video is just the mechanism that we're leveraging to help them reach their sales or marketing goal. Well, you're right on that. So, so that being said, right. And, and I think this is good advice, uh, your your high end project, I think it's just like fifty to hundred k, probably an up, right? To be a just to do something for a good size company, but the tip of spear could be, hey, listen, this is how we start. Don't call it a loss leader because you still probably make money out. But it's like you could have someone who does that. Hey, listen, we start with a one day shoot. You get this much social. We do ninety days worth of stuff. It's like your first buy. We we you know, and then you know, it's like a discounted. Just try us out, kind of stuff. That could be resold yeah. because then once they're in the zone, then you're closing them on like, let's be your you know your long partner on this stuff mm-hmm. and. Um, and I don't know if that works in your world or not, but, uh, but, but that's, that I know is, is an effective battle against what you just described is, um, a very difficult thing. This, the, the salespeople sell the tip of spear. I, I don't know if you're employing that or not. I've tried it, but it is advice I'm giving you to entrepreneurs. I, your, your opinion, please. 
Yeah, totally agree. And that's a lot what we do. What we do is we try to start with one initial project because a lot of times when customers work with us, it's their first time getting exposure with video with a product, professional company. So we try to basically get as, as we try to provide as much value as possible on any shoot. But oftentimes what we'll do is we'll say, okay, we're going to do the brand video. The brand video is the most expensive. It's the heaviest list, but lift, but it's the highest value. And since we're there, we've talked about also creating some educational content down the line. And we talked about, you know, uh, maybe doing a service video that just focuses on this. So while we've got the team there, why don't we ask all the questions that we need for that future service video or that future educational content? And we'll just kind of put that in the, for the, on the side and we'll have it in the can and then we'll do the brand video. We want to leverage that, make sure that you're successful with it. And then once you are, we can always revisit this stuff later at a discounted rate because we've already done all the filming. You know, we've got everyone scheduled. We've got all the fancy gear. And so we'll work with it, uh, work with a lot of clients on that way as well. So we're kind of future proofing some video stuff by maximizing our shoot. And we're always looking for ways to solve problems for clients on what they what they're struggling with. And if video is going to be the driver to help do that. And sometimes it's not. I mean, I just had a conversation with a client the other day and they're like, our biggest problem is not marketing. It's not sales. It's recruiting, you know, and we already created a great recruiting video for them. So in that case, it's let me connect you with someone that's worked in civil engineering in recruiting that can help you solve that problem as far as getting more applicants, you know? So it's oftentimes not necessarily video, but we're always trying to look for ways to help our clients in any way we can, whether it's a connection or video content or, you know, anything else. What, uh, what's, uh, give me a success story. So, uh, and, uh, you know, kind of frame it up the use case, if you will, because I mm -hmm. think sometimes, uh, I think understanding like where it works, you said sometimes it works and doesn't work. It's not the right video. So maybe talk about one that was like, Hey, this was like, this works every time. And you would never have guessed that they, you know, it's kind of like the, you know, the, the sleeper industry that never uses video versus the one that, thinks they need it, right? It's bomb. It didn't work. And so take a few moments on that one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of my favorite success stories is from one of my first clients called the Austin shoe hospital. And, um, they started off, they just wanted to do a brand story video about who they were. They're a manufacturing company. They basically, you send them your purse, you send them your sh fancy Louis Vuitton shoes and they repair them. So they're predominantly a manufacturing company. So not an industry that usually does video. Um, however, they're consumer facing and their primary goal was we want to expand more than Austin. We want to be able to be people to trust us, to see that we're credible because we want people to mail in their shoes or their fancy purses to us and believe that we're credible, uh, and they can trust us. So we created this brand story video and it was immensely successful. Uh, it was done like a long time ago and they still use it today. So they increased their calls by like 60% and they just exploded um, from there. They're now like the official repair supplier for DSW and they've launched this huge program with dry cleaners across the country. And they've been one of our biggest advocates as far as using and leveraging video. That video was so successful that we went on to create individual videos on each service and it was like 20 videos for that. I think we've created over 60 videos for them over the years. Um, and it's been incredibly powerful from a conversion standpoint, from a growth standpoint, and also branding. Uh, one of the co-owners said, he said, um, people tell us that I sell your videos online and then the conversation goes from there. And that's almost like an exact quote. So it's incredibly powerful, not only from a conversion standpoint and connecting with your audience and educating them on what you do and how you can make their life better. It's also really good from a branding standpoint. I'll often tell people that like, imagine you're just doing a search and you come to a website and it's kind of janky. Like you kind of subconsciously are like, well, the quality of the experience is going to be pretty bad that I'm going to get from this company. Right. Right. Whereas if you have a good looking site and you have a really professional video, it kind of elevates the quality of the brand to be like, okay, these guys are serious. They're credible. This is someone that I can trust and so on. No, you're a hundred percent right. And, and that's, 
that's why you do these videos because if you raise your brand and people identify with it and they buy into it and then if the products seem to where i think it would fall apart is if you spend all this money for your company persona and your your brand awareness and then all of a sudden you you, you kind of cheaped out on the product videos or you you know you, you made it like ugh, like like you, you just didn't do it well like you th- that's where i think sometimes that strategy piece is so important that um is missing and oftentimes i think a customer wants you know, you sell them what they want, you deliver what they need. Uh, they, they may say, hey, we want to do it this way. And you, it, it, you talk about that where you come in and you're like, love the creative di- direction. Can we chop that up a bit? Because you already know that that's not going to work. That's going to look so 80s or 90s. And like, no, I, I would, like talk about how to interact with it. Like, so if you're a customer listening and you want this, listen up because he's going to talk to you about when your ideas are bad and how you deliver that news. Go ahead. Yeah. So what's often really good when we work with clients is we kind of come in as an outsider, like knowing a little bit about their business or industry or, uh, and really understanding. So like, I'll give you a perfect example. We work with a tech company and usually when you're a tech company, it's typically you want to tell the story that's got to get approved by eight people on the C-level exec team. And it's very technical in nature and they kind of over explain things. So when we work with clients, we try to distill the information down to its simplest form so the person watching it understands it. And an outsider can do that better than someone who has like the curse of knowledge where they just assume that what they're saying, everyone else knows. And, you know, I'm a perfect, I try to watch myself as much as possible when I talk to clients, not to get too technical on, you know, how it's all going to work. I just say, we're going to bring out a lot of fancy gear. It's going to look beautiful. I don't get into the technical things of what format we're going to use, what Kodak we're going to use, what color profile is best for grading. You know, they don't care about that. They don't know about it. It's not important. Right. So that's what we try to do is really distill that message down to its simplest form. And we use like a very specific proven story structure to tell the story. So it's designed to engage, educate, and ultimately the goal of converting uh, viewers into buyers. You're a, uh, you're, you know, you're very nice. See, I think it'd be easy to work with. It'd be great. Uh, listen, how, who do you want to get a hold of you and, and how should they do that? Yeah. If you're curious about video and you don't know where to start, a good place is our website. There's a lot of great resources there. It's mosaicmediafilms.com forward slash resources. There's some great guides. There's great video content. There's a survey to understand what types of videos you should be thinking about, depending if you're a B2B or B2C and how you market. It's all free. You can access it all there. Um, Alternatively, if you're thinking about video and you want to have more of a one-on-one consult and understand like how can we be using and leveraging video with our current marketing, you need some more one-on-one attention, uh, you can go to our site just on the contact us and schedule a call with myself or someone from my team. And we'll do like a consult with you to tell you a little bit more about video and how it will work specifically for your business. Yeah, that's great. Uh, If there's one question I should have asked you today, but I didn't, what would be that question? What's that? I said, if there's one question I should have asked you today, but I didn't, what would that question? Okay. What is it? Uh, you tell me, you tell me, what's the question? He's like, he should Oh, what's the me? one question you should have asked me today? You know what? Yeah, the the one question that I like to answer that I answer almost every time is what are the three types of videos every business should be thinking about? Oh, that is um, a good so you one. You kind of walk away with some yeah. tangible things just to kind of get your wheel spinning on how you can use and leverage video. So what I guess, is that? So let's answer that. Like now that, yeah, so now I'll that answer, you, I'll answer that that question, we have to answer it. We have to do it. So what I found to be the most effective videos for clients, no matter if you're B2B or B2C, is basically these three, which is a social video, which you're going to use in tests for ads um, to drive traffic. The other one is your brand or business video. This is an evergreen video about who you are, what you do. That's kind of your flagship video. Most customers have that video for five years. And the third, which can be used at the top of the funnel or in the bottom of the funnel, is a customer testimonial, or we usually call them case stories. So it's showing a transformational change in the form of a customer that has had a great experience, providing you more social proof, overcoming objections that you might have. And we've had customers leverage this both on the top of their funnel for ads and both on the bottom of the funnel for sales enablement. So using it to overcome objections, um, whether it be to B or B to C. So those are the three most powerful videos and um, the customer testimonial, for example, 
We do that both on site, like if you're in Austin, Texas area, and then we've done them actually even remotely where we'll interview people uh, remotely. We'll take care of the scheduling, interviewing and editing and distill a 20 to 30 minute interview down to like a minute and a half with, and then give a client two social cuts. So, you know, as businesses have clients that are all over the place, that's a cost effective way to get some great social proof and leverage content that's professionally done. Yeah. Well, and you're right. You need all three. Um, and, in it's kind of like, you mm-hmm. know, don't be half pregnant, go all in if you're going to do it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Otherwise, stick with small social stuff and, you know, just do your best you can until you can kind of do it professionally. Uh, thanks again, by the way, Mark. This is uh, like, uh, I wish I had more budget. I'd hire you um, to yeah. do this. Uh, you're very knowledgeable in this. And if you guys, uh, and thanks for coming on today. I appreciate everyone who's uh, listening and, and doing stuff here. Um, Mark, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I'm going to say goodbye here. I'm going to put you off stage here. I'll bring you back on here right after I say goodbye. But thanks for coming on today, Mark. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. It's been fun. And uh, everyone who's listened to this point, thanks again for, for you know, for getting this part into the, uh, the show. You know, check out mosaicmediafilms.com. Uh, Mark is a wealth of knowledge in, in video editing and, and I'm sorry, video scenography and all the things that go with it with editing and production strategy. And, and so leverage him as a resource, reach out um, and, and bring your brand to life with them. Uh, thanks again for listening to the Never Been Promoted podcast. If you love the podcast, you know, and, and the YouTube channel, give it a follow or subscribe and, or a five-star rating on your favorite player. Um, until we meet again, just get out there and go unleash your entrepreneur. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Never Been Promoted podcast. If you liked today's show, subscribe at youtube.com forward slash at never been promoted. Until next time, Get out there and go unleash your inner entrepreneur. Thanks again to instantlyrelevant.com for producing the show, all the social media, all the content, posts, articles, everything. Could not do it without you. Instantlyrelevant.com. Check it out. They're awesome. Once again, instantlyrelevant.com.